Electrolytes and mineral salts and beverages is all the rage today. But here's a fact, it's always been popular. You can go back to Roman times and they loved a good mineral spring. And the origin of the soda fountain actually has to do with salt waters. And that's the sale of mineral spring water or the recreation of natural springs using salts or electrolytes. Now, I'm a great person to teach you this because I studied chemistry, but I also wrote a book on the history of the soda fountain. And if you've read my book, Fix the Pumps, you know, there's a, a section on mixing mineral waters and also uh, probably a dozen recipes on different mineral springs. Now that's only a small sampling. There are a number of good books from the late 1800s, early 1900s that basically replicate all sorts of mineral, natural mineral waters using different salts. And that's what I'm gonna show you today because it's interesting and I focus mostly on flavor and there is a preference people have for concentration and types of minerals in their beverages for spring water or mineral water. So there's a couple good research papers that I'm gonna talk about. But before we get into that, again, I'm focusing on the flavor part, not necessarily the health aspects, though eventually I would do a, a video on like magnesium glycinate, a bunch of the more modern salts that you wouldn't find in a volcanic spring. But it's kind of a good stepping stone to learn the original mineral waters. So, and speaking of health issues, there aren't any really with mineral salts, except for taking too much. So for example, magnesium, some of the magnesium salts like chloride and citrate, though they dissolve nicely in water and are very convenient to use, are known laxatives. So having too much of them in your mineral water or electrolyte solution can cause gastrointestinal distress. So use cautiously. Uh, the other one is potassium. Uh, you can use a fair amount of potassium, but if you find you're glitching, or having arrhythmias or nervous system problems that can be potassium and excess of potassium can cause that. Now I know a lot of videos on the internet and you know blog posts talk about using uh, salt like sea salt or Himalayan pink salt. Uh, we're going to avoid the sodium chloride today for one reason it's pretty harsh like the flavor is not the greatest. When you're looking at this research paper or three research papers uh, they specifically say that sodium and chlorine ions, so sodium chloride is table salt, is less pleasant and people don't necessarily like them. So what we're going to focus on is the four mineral salts that people, or the, the four ions that people actually prefer. So magnesium and sulfate, so you can get magnesium sulfate, which is just Epsom salt, and you get that at the pharmacy. We're going to use calcium sulfate because calcium is another one. So calcium, magnesium, and sulfate are three of the four favorite ions. And then sodium bicarbonate, which is sodium we all know is kind of a salty flavor. But the bicarbonate gives the, the much higher pH, so kind of in the 8 to 9 range. And that gives a, a more pleasant mouthfeel and, you know, a lot of people would use mineral waters for digestion. So if you have an upset stomach, sodium bicarbonate can help that. And then the last one is potassium bicarbonate. Again, bicarbonate being the fourth of the four elements. So magnesium, calcium, sulfate, and bicarbonate or carbonate, but we're using bicarbonates today, are the four ions that are most liked. The ones that are not are chlorine and then potassium and sodium, though we are going to use potassium and sodium, but in smaller amounts than what you'd normally see on the internet. So some sites are recommending like two, uh, half a teaspoon of salt. That's just way too much. You're going to find this a far more pleasant beverage. So now that you know the four ions that taste good, what level? is the best tasting. So for that, you're looking at between 200 parts per million to 800 parts per million or milligrams per liter of total dissolved solids. So the formula I have today is around 7, 750. And I've come up with a fairly easy way to measure it. But this level is pretty common in a lot of mineral waters. And it's also used these salts and the concentration are very similar to Burton salts, which if you have ever brewed beer or you're you know, really into brewing beer, you'll know what Burton salts are. 
And the water in Burton, UK, has a total dissolved solids around 750, and it's heavy in sulfate. So that's what makes the beer different there. So there's a lot of correlating evidence as to why people like certain mineral waters, why we like certain concentrations. So you can find it in brewing of beer, you can find it in the mineral waters we like, like Perrier and San Pellegrino, because they're in the 400 type range, 400 to 500. And so what I'm gonna show you today is about 700, just because I want people to actually taste a little bit of the saltiness, though unlike sodium chloride, it's not the harsh saltiness. And all of these ingredients are easy to get. Sodium bicarbonate is just, you know, baking soda. Uh, very easy to get. You can get calcium sulfate at most brewing stores. It's also used to make tofu. So if you make tofu, you'll probably have it around. And potassium bicarbonate, you can actually just buy on Amazon. It's pretty readily available. And, you know, some people will say, why don't you use like potassium citrate or potassium chloride? And potassium chloride, for one, tends to be harsh in flavor. People don't necessarily like it in higher concentrations. So it's that potassium and chloride ion that people don't like that you find in this research paper. And I'll link all of this. They're not publicly available, but you can read the abstracts. And if you have any questions about them, you can ask them over on Patreon. I can give you some uh, details from these research papers. But the idea is that the potassium and chloride don't leave a fairly good flavor. So if you actually dip your finger in and taste it, you'll find it quite harsh. Now, the problem child of the electrolyte and mineral salt world is calcium. It has a tendency to always want to form calcium carbonate, which is not soluble in water. Uh, I've, as I've been experimenting, you know, mixing different salts, you'll see that this is basically calcium carbonate in a liter of water. It's a reaction of, uh, I think it was calcium citrate with sodium bicarbonate, kind of like this one where you just basically get sediment. And that kind of sediment is calcium carbonate. And calcium carbonate isn't soluble in water. And sometimes the reactions take a little bit of time, but uh, it, it will happen and it can cause scaling if you're using kegging equipment, or it, it's just like basically eating Rolaids when you make it. So that's what this is, calcium carbonate. Now it's good for indigestion or you know acid, reflux, but it's not actually good to drink because you can't actually dissolve it in water properly. You can do it in really, really small amounts or if you carbonate the water, the uh, carbon dioxide will help dissolve calcium carbonate. But my preference is just to avoid it altogether. So calcium sulfate doesn't react with sodium bicarbonate or potassium bicarbonate. Uh, and it forms a fairly stable mixture. Now, these are a lot of the problematic salts, the calcium and to a degree magnesium. To understand all of this, you kind of need like first year college or university chemistry. But what I'm gonna show you with four ingredients is how to get started. And then you can slowly start adding different things. I'll do a, a separate course on using some of the more modern like magnesium glycinate or the amino acid salts. They tend to be more stable, this one particularly stable in these types of solutions. So you just don't want that sedimentation because who wants to drink chalk? And that's literally what calcium carbonate is, is chalk. So let me show you how to simply mix these together and at what levels. I will have a formula sheet for all of this over on my Patreon page. You now, Patreon does help support, if you're a member there, it does help support buying all these salts and doing all the legwork to figure things out for you. So if you actually want the whole formula and all the instructions written out, I will have that over there. But just let me show you how to make this, because it's fairly easy. When it comes to making this electrolyte solution, super easy, what you're gonna do is just measure out your four salts into a container. And we're gonna make 100 servings, just because it's easier to weigh out. And then you'll have a container to use. So if you have a one liter water bottle, you can simply add 1 8 of a teaspoon uh, you get one eighth teaspoons at, you know, on Amazon and stuff, but it needs to be about one eighth because that's going to give you about 700 milligrams of salt in your liter of water. That's kind of the 
a little bit on the higher end of the sweet spot for flavor preference. Now you may have a higher salt tolerance. You may like things really salty. So you may like double the amount and you can, you just take two scoops or use a quarter teaspoon of it. But an eighth of a teaspoon I've measured out and it does weigh 700 milligrams plus or minus, depending on the, you know, how powdery these are, they will, you know, vary depending on the manufacturer. And, you know, you can adjust things. Magnesium sulfate does have a kind of a, a subtle bitterness to it, but most people find it pleasant at low concentrations. But if you're picking it up, you can remove it. Again, you know, you can substitute something like magnesium glycinate, which has a more pleasant flavor overall. But the point is, is all you have to do is make a hundred servings by weighing out four of these. So first thing we're gonna do is potassium bicarbonate and we're gonna weigh out 10 grams of this. And you don't need to be super accurate for this, but always do weigh each one individually and then dump it into the container. Next, we're gonna add 25 grams of potassium or sodium bicarbonate. And if we're weighing out like a hundred servings of this, you know, as long as you're within a gram on each one, that is perfectly fine. So the next one, we're gonna add some magnesium sulfate and we're gonna add 15 grams of this. And finally, 20 grams of calcium sulfate or gypsum. And there you have 100 doses of salt mix. Now give it a good shake because you want everything evenly dispersed in this. You don't want to be just having calcium sulfate one time and sodium bicarbonate. But once you get it all mixed up, all you'll do is get a glass of water. You'll open up your container, take one eighth of a teaspoon. And you know, you want it fairly smooth, like level. So I just rubbed along there and then dump it in and you can actually just stir it up. And it will take, this is cold water straight out of the tap. So it can take a minute to dissolve properly, but in general, it will go clear. Uh, it may have a slight haze depending, but you won't have any sediment. So what we will have is effectively your electrolyte or mineral solution. And on the milligrams of salts on that, you're gonna have 60 milligrams of calcium, you're gonna have 30 milligrams of magnesium, and you're gonna have 75 milligrams of sodium and 39 milligrams of potassium. So now that I've added this to the right amount of water, we've have one liter of water with one eighth of a teaspoon or 700 milligrams of salt. This is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be mostly clear. There's no real sediment on the bottom and it may have a slight haze to that, but that would probably go away over time. It doesn't taste surprisingly like anything. It has a very mild basic flavor, which can come across as like slightly sweet, but not that sweet. It's not gonna be like anything like sugar, but there is a different feeling. That comes from the bicarbonates and then the sulfates and the, the magnesium sulfate in particular has kind of an astringency to it. It's not overpowering or anything. It's not like wine or tannins, but you do notice it. You can adjust this any way you want. So if you've been making a mineral water or an electrolyte solution from other recipes that use a lot of sea salt, then you're gonna find this water somewhat bland. This would be something that if you were to serve at a restaurant would go over really well. Uh, just, it has flavor. And I should note that if you're using tap water, your tap water has probably got minerals in it already, especially if you're having hard water. So the mineral content probably around a thousand parts per million, it could be even a little bit higher, uh, depending on the hardness of your water. So if you wanted to make this and do some taste testing, use distilled water and then change the salts because whatever you got coming out of your tap, it's almost guaranteed to have some minerals in it. But if you want to adjust it, go ahead. Just be careful with the calcium ions. You will be mixing them up and all of a sudden you'll get a white cloud form. Uh, if you use phosphate salts, they will do the same thing and you'll just end up with a hazy murky solution. So 
The real trick with this is trying to figure out which salts you can mix together without them reacting to form a different salt that's insoluble in water. And there are lots of different tricks to that. Most of it's just understanding what you're working with, but you can do uh, adjustments. Like I said, sodium chloride or potassium chloride will not react with anything in here. So you can add them. Most of these like sodium sulfate and potassium citrate will work fine. You know, sodium citrate, if you've uh, seen my video on acids, you might have this lying around. This will work as well. It won't react to form anything. You can use just plain old salt or, you know, sodium lactate, which lactic acid and sodium react and they form sodium lactate. Calcium lactate and sodium lactate are used as flavor enhancers. So you should be able to find this on the internet. I know Amazon has calcium lactate, but calcium lactate's over here in the problem child section because it will react with bicarbonates and form calcium carbonate. So I'd stick with sodium lactate on this one because the calcium will drop out a solution. And you know, there are other salts, you know, potassium carbonate which has a higher pH. So it's more of a pH of around 11 versus nine. Sometimes that can come across as soapy in your water. It's just got such a high pH that people associate it with soap. So you don't wanna to use too much of that, but you can adjust your pH with this. So you can try this at different pHs. So eight, 8.5, nine, 9.5, see which ones you like better. And then potassium chloride is often found in the uh, no salt or salt substitute uh, section of your grocery store. It's usually just potassium chloride. It does have a harsh taste on its own. Uh, so most people find it's, you know, perfectly fine in really small amounts, but too much, it becomes like a harsh, unpleasant flavor. So use sparingly. You know, I can keep going on and on and on about salts. There are literally dozens, if not a hundred different salts we could work with, probably more. But this is a starting point. I will do another video on this. Tell me what you want to learn and I will try to you know, include it. So put a comment below if there's anything that you're curious about in this. But this four salt solution and maybe a little sodium chloride will make your electrolyte and mineral waters so much better. And you can use this in soda and cocktails. You can do a lot with this and it will enhance flavor for other drinks. So. Whether you're making a soda fountain beverage, like a new Coca-Cola or new Cola, and you want to add some salts to it to enhance flavor, this is the way you would do it. Uh, let me know what you think of the video, and I will see you in the next one.